morning. Good morning. So, uh, would you mind taking, everyone mind taking out your hymnals and turning into the unity statement of being? There is one presence and one power in this church, in our lives, and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And our five unity principles, unity principle number one, God is absolute good everywhere present. Number two. God is in us, therefore we are very good. Number three, we are co-creators with God and create our experiences through our thoughts. Number four, prayer is creative thinking that heightens our connection with God and all. And number five, we are not to send you know those principles. We must live the truth we you know. Amen. Would everyone uh, please stand? And turn your hymn notes to page number four, holy, holy, holy. Page number four, holy, holy, holy.
our innermost consciousness. This is a time where we can go apart for a while and be one with spirit. Our innermost nature. Experience the sanctity within. yourself to simply be. Throughout our days, we get caught up in the busyness and the doing. And so here, as we are in this sanctuary together, experience simply be. So I invite you to go inwards. Allow yourself to experience the depths of the unknown. Sends the intellectual mind. For it is from these spaces of wholeness that translate into right minded thinking. As we see and realize that there truly is no lack. just weren't seen parts of ourselves that were already there. And that we need only be still and know that perfection yourself to experience and contemplate these things. Allow yourself to experience more of you than 
exists in the unknown, in the uncertain. Be still and know that there are always greater truths that exist within you. So as we are contemplating these things, contemplating our wholeness, 
wholeness that exists beyond the certainty, beyond the known. I invite everyone here to, to join me in conscious prayer as we set the intention to create a space within me and within you for this message. For personalities to move out of the way and allow the wholeness and fullness <coughs> of this living message to express itself. Allow the seeds to be disseminated and in time grow and bear fruit. Feel this gratitude for this wholeness that exists within us. In the name after the loving nature of blessed spirit. And so it is. We have the choir that is going to bless us. We have Mike and the top of that.
turn your hymnals to page number 62. Please stand. We're going to be uh, singing Fairest Lord Jesus. Page number 62, Fairest Lord Jesus.
our personalities find it so difficult to do is to step into uncertain situations or to experience uncertainty and to experience the unknown. There's a fear. And, and, and this fear is rooted really in our DNA from the standpoint of at one point it was necessary for our survival as a species. At one point, see we didn't have society that we have, that we have now. So we had to compete with other elements in our environment. And so it was important to have certainty because see, when we were uncertain, see that was, that's a part of our brain that's, uh, that's governed by our amygdala and our limbic system that was meant to ensure that we stayed alive. So it was meant to be suspicious of these uncertain spaces. So in case in the in this shadow or whatever there was something ready to pounce on us, you know, ready to get us, make us dinner, you know. So, so but but see now in these social settings, as we began to evolve our frontal lobe, we began to move from the place of survival and to a space of our a greater spaces of our divinity and what is possible. But the older portions of our brain still exist. You see, they're still here. And so we have a natural inclination not to want to experience uncertainty. There's a natural inclination not to want to be uncomfortable and experience the unknown because there's still this ancient, ancient, ancient memory that uncertainty means possible death. We still have this ancient memory. We still have it. Yet this talk is about understanding that that type of understanding will only take us so far. It will only take us to where we are now. That in order to experience and continue to experience evolution, there is a greater part of us that exists in the uncertainty that will only be revealed to us in the uncertainty that will create a greater understanding of who we are in the uncertainty. This goes hand in hand with being apex visionaries. So I was entitled Shifting Sands, Transformation. Trust in spirit with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge spirit and it will make you straight your paths. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. You know, when we talk about spirit, you know, we think that we're talking about some sort of external thing, an external force, an external something or whatever. We look at it like it's a like it's a third party. So what is spirit? Spirit is our higher self. Spirit is our highest self. It is our original self. It is the self that we have always been. It is our natural self. And from the stand, standpoint of the personality and the way that it sees, then it would look at spirit as the supernatural self. But it is our natural self. We are not talking about trusting in some sort of other thing. We are talking about trusting in your highest self. And do not rely 
on the understandings of your personality that needs its certainty, that feels safe in what is known. If this scripture was to be written today for today's people, because we're different people now, keep in mind that's a 8,000 year old scripture, that's what it would say. And all you do, acknowledge your highest self. Acknowledge your highest self, and it will make straight your paths. You see, your highest self knows all the angles. It can see further down the road than you can possibly see. Your highest self is connected with everyone. Your highest self is not some separate highest self, and then another person has a separate highest. No, your highest self is, and everyone's highest self is one. So it knows all the angles, you see? Your highest self works through your brothers and sisters because it is their highest self as well. It will make straight your path. It will make straight your intentions. <laughs> but see, when we get caught up in the certainty, we get caught up in the things that you know, have, to, have to be, we get caught up in, in this one finite way of understanding things, see, we miss out on, on new understanding. We miss out on new possibilities. We miss out on expanding because we see, these are just grand training wheels. That's all they are. They're just training wheels. They're just training wheels. That's all they are. We all can remember riding a bicycle with training wheels. It was pretty awkward. I mean, we were happy to be riding our bicycle with those training wheels. We were. You know, now, now we can only move with like, you know, about three miles an hour or something like that with those training wheels, maybe four or five mile tops. It wasn't until we took those training wheels off that we experienced true freedom on that bicycle. It wasn't until we took those training wheels off and we moved away from that way of riding that bicycle that we were able to experience getting on down the road. Riding through our neighborhoods. Free. Wind in our hair. That's the only time we ever experienced that. And I'm here to tell you that certainty is just another training. that the greatest gift that you can ever experience lies in that which is not known. That's where there's an infinite number of possibilities that exist. You know, you guys have been with me for over a year now, because I joined you as an intern. And when I first joined you, many of you remember, I would use this. This is what I used. I had my notes. I needed my notes. I needed them, because I needed them to feel safe. I needed them to feel like everything was going to be OK. Even though I found myself Straying away from them and just getting it, just getting feeling, feeling the spirit and just you know, saying what I had to say, I'll, I'll get scared. If I go back, I've lost my place. You guys remember, you know? It wasn't until, and you know, I had great teachers in Unity Worldwide. Reverend Charlene Manuel was one of the, one of the greatest uh, speakers in the Unity Movement today. And she was my homiletics one and two teacher. And she would, you know, urge us to get away from the notes. But guess what? We needed our notes. That's what we felt. We, we needed our notes. We had to have our notes. So I, I understand what you're saying. I respect you. I've seen you talk. You're phenomenal. But I need my notes. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. OK. All right. It wasn't until Black History Month. And my notes just didn't do it justice. They just didn't. They just didn't do it. They just didn't do it justice. You see, because there were so many complexities with Black History Month. We're in Hispanic Heritage Month right now, but there were so many complexities with Black History Month 
you know, because there were so many things that were overcome, but then there was a lot of pain as well. There was a lot of this. At first, I wrote this thing about, like, you know, this positive thing. Yeah, you know, and this is where we're going, and, you know, we've come so far. And, but then it, it just felt empty because it didn't seem to address some of the pain that also was part of Black History Month. That was also part of the African American experience. It didn't seem to address that. It seemed kind of fake, you know? So then I, you know, wrote another one. And I was like, you know, this, this one, I put the pain and everything, I put that in there, I put all that in there. I, put, I was depressed, just read it. How did you say, what, I just come in for this? You know, I could have stayed home. <laughs> so, you know, I wrote it one more time, and I just didn't do it in, so I just said, you know something, Holy Spirit, we're just gonna do it together. It took all of that for me to get away from my training wheels. It took that. And under your, your love, under your love, I have, I have grown and I have flourished. Under your love, I am so grateful for this community. I am so grateful for you. I give gratitude for you all the time. You know, but the Wednesday service is something else, though. Because I'm going to tell you about the Wednesday service. See, many of you have never come to the Wednesday service. Some of you have. The Wednesday service I wake up in the morning, I don't even know what I'm about to talk about. Okay? I have no idea. When I go to bed at night, I'll let you know the ritual. I'm going to let you know what happens. When I go to bed at night, Holy Spirit, I know the perfect message will come to me. And so I just have that certainty. If I'm going to have a certainty, I'm going to have that certainty in my highest self. I'm going to have that type of certainty. Now, I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I don't want any of that stuff. You know, I want the certainty that, that this message will be here. So I wake up in the morning and sometimes, you know, I'll go check the mailbox as far as in my mind to see if the message got there. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not there. All right, okay, it's not there yet, okay, it's okay. So I'm driving, going into the church on Wednesday, and sometimes I'll talk to, you know, I'll talk to my partner, Claudia, who's here right now, Reverend Claudia Holmes, and I'll talk to her and tell her, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about what kind of message I'm going to give. And sometimes I'll get a message from her, see, Holy Spirit works through all of us, you see. Sometimes I'll get an idea from her. Okay, now, I may not know the scripture, but then I'll start thinking of some coincide scripture. Still don't know what I'm going to say. Okay? And then there's been some times where I actually was here and was like, is there anything anybody wants to learn about? Or anything like that? So, I'm going to tell you what I go through and the reason why I love it so much because there's an uncertainty that exists. See, there's this underlying like fear that, you know, because I don't know what I'm going to say that I'm experiencing, but there's also a certainty in my higher self that, that something's going to come. There's a certainty that something's going to come. And see, I hold on to that because, yes, I, my personality is just like anybody else's personality. Was trying to, try to want to have a certain environment. You know, we want to have our bullet points. See, at least that's a bullet point. At least I thought you had some, some talking points or something like that. No! No! And so then, when I get up here, after we've gone through things, then I begin to speak. And the words come. We're talking about spontaneous creation. Now, this is nothing different than things that musicians and, and, and poets and other artists like painters, there is this, there is this infinite intelligence that lives in that which we're passionate about. And if you're, that, if you're passionate about it, you can actually tap into it and you can spontaneously create something. And these are some phenomenal talks. You have to ask the people that are here, you know, and I, it's like, you know, and I'm like, man, I should have recorded that or something, you know? And this is what you are able to do. There is nothing special about me. This is what you are able to do. The only thing is, I'm willing to go into the uncertainty. That's it. I'm willing to step into that being uncertain. I'm willing to brave that being afraid that I'm not going to have anything to say. I, but at the same time, on the other side of that, of that, on the other side of that coin, there's a part of me that infinitely trusts spirit. 
that infinitely trusts my higher self, that infinitely knows, and I also see the end result. I see the completed talk. I see in my mind the consciousness being raised. So I'm seeing these things, even though I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm seeing these things already as the end result. Don't know how I'm going to get there. It doesn't matter how I get there. Spirit takes you there. Your higher self takes you there. You've already given your GPS. You've already entered your GPS. This is where you want to be. And spirit will take you there. These are gifts that you experience in the uncertainty that you're not going to experience in those certain moments where you have to be on top of everything. You have to be in control. You have to, you have, to have everything listed, this A, B, C, one, two, three type of thing. You're not going to experience what I'm talking about. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So how do we do this? Let's get right to it. How do we do this? Well, the first thing it takes is a mindset. It takes a mindset to understand that uncertainty equals opportunity. It takes that mindset. You have to get that into your mind, you see? Because that's the only way you're going to have the willingness to actually enter into those uncertain spaces. That's the only time you're going to have the willingness to actually be in that situation, understanding but and getting it into your head that uncertainty equals opportunity. You may not know what the opportunity is. I, a lot of times, I don't know what the opportunity is. But there's opportunity here. There's opportunity for me to learn more about who I am here. There's opportunity for me to learn more about what I can do here. Whatever this opportunity is, it does not exist in the certainty. It does not exist where in the things that I already know. I've talked about this before. I say it's like making a cake. If you understand, you know how to make a cake because you have to understand all the ingredients, you know, and, 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 and it becomes your training wheels. It gets in the way of the possibilities of that finished product as far as that cake being made any other way. So you have to get everything out of the way. Everything that you know about making that cake, get it all out of there. But see the end result of making that cake the end result. This end, see, 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 the, see the cake tasting great. A delicious tasting cake, for example. You don't know how to get there, but you know the end result in your mind. This instant, this will create the possibilities, new possibilities that you hadn't considered, that you hadn't explored, if you're willing to trust that you have the ability to make that cake. If you're willing to trust in something other than your understanding, so what I'm saying, do not rely on your own understanding. If you're, if, you, if you're willing to trust that there is a greater intelligence that lives within you, that is always connected to everything, that knows all the angles, that it knows what to do no matter what, and you're willing to trust and get out of the, the way your, your, your personality kind of interferes with all of its needing to be certain, because that's an interference, guys. That's how we interfere with spirit. And get that out of the way so that you can experience true amazement, so we can be amazed. So we can experience what we call miracles. You begin to see that these are things that you accomplished, things that you didn't even know that you could do. And if you would just stay in these certain spaces, these certain spaces of certainty, you would never have realized it. You would never have realized how vast you are, how powerful you are, how much you can actually do. Can I, can I get an amen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Wasn't sure if you were finished. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, the mindset that it equals opportunity, that uncertainty equals opportunity, that's so important. But the first thing is, and I talked about this last week, as far as the thing that we can do to, to raise our consciousness, to, to, to open us up, meditation and gratitude. Those two things. A regular meditation practice and a regular gratitude practice. Those two things work hand in hand to raise consciousness so that you can begin to experience those higher order ideas that are always here, you see? Your higher self has these higher order ideas, but if you want your personality to be able to pick up a, a thing or two or a couple more, you gotta keep on raising it. You gotta keep raising it up. Meditation and gratitude is how we do that. That's how we raise it up. That's how we raise the consciousness. I'm just going to keep it real simple. 
I'm not going to tell you how much, how, you know, how much meditation to do. You come up, come show them. I'm just telling you, you get what you put into it. You're going to get what you put into it. Whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of it. It works if you're working. So meditation and gratitude are so important. Because see, meditation, so you're going to be harmonizing your thoughts. See, harmonizing just basically means, just basically means making your thoughts peaceful. So you have all these thoughts, you see? You have all these thoughts, and when we're not ready, regularly meditating, you know, those thoughts can cause anxiety, to just, to, for lack of a better word. So one of the first benefits that people who meditate regularly uh, have, have all said is that there seems to be a peace that they experience, you know, that a lot of times uh, ex exists the entire day. Just by regularly meditating. And that's how we raise our energy. With gratitude. Gratitude, though, I said this last talk. Gratitude, a regular gratitude practice. What are your triggers? What are your triggers? And when I say triggers, what are the things that you enjoy doing? Because when I say have a trigger, I'm not talking about when you get triggered by something. I'm talking about what are the things that you enjoy doing? Me, I enjoy food. Okay? So a lot of times it's like before I eat, I'm sitting up there talking about all the things that I'm grateful for. The food about to turn cold. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, four or five minutes, I'm talking about, talking about you guys, so I'm grateful for you, grateful for this, grateful for this talk, grateful for all kinds of different things. And yeah, this you know the food's kind of lukewarm now. You know? I'm grateful for a conversation with Claudia, we got into a disagreement, stuff like that. See, we're not just talking about the things where I felt good at the time. All things, all things, you know, work together for my highest good. I recognize that, you see? Even my disagreements with my partner or anything like that still lead to my growth. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you for that. Thank you. I don't know what I don't know what I'm supposed to learn here, but I'm thanking you anyway. I know the lessons are going to come, and trusting that, trusting that. The next thing is to begin to look. at even things that are certain that that is only one possibility. Begin to kind of divest yourself in the things that you know, the things that you know, the things that are certain, that this is only one way to do it. See, that will open you up to other ways to do it, other ways to see it, other ways to know it. That will open your mind up to something that, is, that, that, that's, that that's transcends this, this original way, this original path that you've been walking, that everybody else has been walking, and everybody's just been walking down this tribal path, okay? To open you up to new paths. So you can surprise yourself. New ways of seeing, new ways of doing, new ways of being, new ways of understanding and perceiving. This is only one way. So look at it in the right context. It's only one way, and that's it. Nothing to get all just go, no, no, this is one way. What about the other ways? What about the other ways? And then begin to look at uncertainty as the gift that it is. There's, there's this infinite amount of, amount, amount of possibilities in the uncertain. There's so many aspects of you that you don't know about in the uncertain that you will learn about as you enter into the uncertain. That you will like surprise yourself. There's so many things that you can do. There's so many things that you are capable of that you will, if you're not going into those uncertain spaces, you're not going to find it. You're not going to see it. You're not going to experience it. So to look at uncertainty, like I said, is opportunity, but, but as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a way of knowing you, of, as a way of intimately knowing who you are. There are things about yourself that you don't even know. Until you go into those uncertain spaces, those unknown spaces that are able to then experience who you are. The last thing I'll say is trust in spirit. Trust in your higher self. Trust in yourself. Your higher self. Not the self that's caught up in all the little different things. I'm talking about your higher self. Your higher self is all that there is. That is God mind. That is your higher self. 
It makes things so much easier on the person. Yeah, the person that's so difficult with the person that when I took when I decided to take over this church, there was no way. It was a huge responsibility. I said, Spirit, let me tell you something. If this gotta be just me, I'm leaving. I'm going back to Houston and not gonna see me anymore. You're gonna help me with this church. You are gonna be my strength. I need you to be my strength. I need you to be wherever it is, wherever it is that I'm, I'm weak, I need you to be that strength. I need you to be that for me. Or else I'm not doing it. I'm not taking it. So Spirit already promised me here. Spirit is helping me run this church. I'm not doing this by myself. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. So what you will begin to understand, what you will begin to experience from these new ways of experiencing yourself. See, it's not in the certain moments, but when you step into the uncertain moments, you will begin to experience these whole new dimensions of yourself. And then you will begin to be uh, uh, expanded. And you will see yourself just so much larger than you see yourself right now. And then you will be able to see things with new eyes. And not only will you be able to see things with new eyes, you'll be able to see your brothers and sisters with new eyes because you know, you'll know what they are capable of as well. You see, even though they may not be experiencing it, you know what they're capable of, you see. You know what they can do, you see. You can hold that vision. See, this goes hand in hand with being an apex visionary because now you see higher possibilities. You see higher possibilities for yourself, and now you see higher possibilities with your brothers and sisters. So I got an affirmation for everybody. Okay. Slowly, slowly. All right, slowly. Slowly. Yes. Slowly. Affirmation. I trust that the universe is conspiring for my greatest good. I am an infinite being of infinite possibilities that are birthed in uncertainties present in each and every moment. Let's try it one more time. All right. I trust that the universe is conspiring for my greatest good. I am an infinite being of infinite possibilities. that are birthed in the uncertainties present in each and every moment. Absolutely, amen. You are the light of the world. Now, who would be that light? That your Father, Mother, God intended for you to be. Thank you. So this is a time where we can show our love and appreciation for this ministry. And all that it does, all that it does, with our tithes and our offering. <clears throat> Divine love, going through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love, flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love, Flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, it is so. Now.
the church and we're going to uh, as far as the um, as far as the uh, uh, chapel not prayer chapels um, platform speakers uh, if you are here for platform speaker training um, we're going to be meeting at 12:20, and so that will last about 20 to 30 minutes. Also, uh, there's electronic giving in the lobby of our desk, just scan a little QR code, and so that way you can give electronically for those of us who are used to giving that way. We appreciate, we appreciate you. Um, we have uh, prayer chaplains available. I'm not exactly certain who's, who's serving today, but we are prayer chaplains available. If you are in need of confidential prayer, just come see me, and there are prayer chaplains I can direct you to. Uh, make sure I'm covering everything. I see we got the kids here. Thank you so much, Susan, for bringing the little ones here. I love them when you bring the little ones. All right, so I, I guess that's about. Oh, I'm sorry. One other, one other announcement. So glad it came to me. We are in need of uh, new board members, and so um, if you um, feel led or guided um, to serve on our leadership team, on our leadership board, um, please see me. Um, or you can see one of the members of the board. Actually, they're going to be in the meeting. Just see me and, and let me know so that that way I can take your take down your information, and we will uh, we'd love to reach out to you and speak to you. Um, other than that, um, let us uh, say our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. The Lord watches between me and me while we are absent, one from the other, and helps us to know that we are all one and one by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's uh, join hands and sing our peace song. Amen. 